If there's a place in the world that time forgot, this is it, Peru. Birthplace of the mighty Inca civilization, land of lost cities and remote tribes. So how on earth did an Australian property developer end up here, promising billion dollar carbon deals to some of the poorest people on the planet? They completely trusted him. And uh, now they're, they're left with nothing. David Nilsson. Yep. Liam Bartlett, 60 yep. Minutes. Yep. His name is David Nilsson. He's from Queensland and says he's just here to help. They're putting their livelihoods, their tribes, their rainforests on the line and you get 50% of all that. Not a bad deal for you, but not too good for them, is it? Well, what, what else are they getting? Who else is giving a better deal in the world? You've got to wonder what Peru has done to deserve this latest invasion. 500 years ago, it was the Spanish conquistadors who came here in search of gold and silver. Later came the rubber barons and then the loggers. But there's a new breed of treasure hunter. They're called carbon cowboys. And what they're after is down there in the vast rainforests of the Amazon. These immense jungles store a large part of the Earth's carbon dioxide. And in the new world of carbon trading, whoever gets the rights to this captured carbon could make himself a very rich man indeed. David Nilsson is out hunting, roaming the Amazon in search of native tribes willing to sign over the rights to the carbon in their rainforests. We had a good trip, everything signed up, uh, missions accomplished. Nilsson's carbon contracts give his company, Amazon Holdings, power of attorney, handing him effective control of the rainforest for 200 years and half of all profits. He told me that he was uh, part uh, Aborigine from Australia and, and that he came from extreme poverty and he wanted to help the, the indigenous people here. They've been here for, for a while. Dan Pantoni is an American scientist who spent years in the Amazon working with native tribes. When Nilsson arrived in Peru two years ago, he hired Pantoni to introduce him to a remote tribe called the Matsis, some of whom still live and hunt as their ancestors did. He saw that they own a lot of land. They own about uh, 450,000 uh, hectares. When you first met him, how did he describe his project? Basically, he, uh, he calculated uh, how many billions of dollars <laughs> the Matses are going to get from carbon credits. He actually had his calculator handy and uh, the numbers he was showing for the Matses, he was showing billions of dollars. Mature trees like this are what carbon trading is all about. Over its lifetime, this will absorb about a tonne of carbon dioxide. So big companies are happy to pay to protect these in order to release a tonne of their own pollution into the atmosphere. They offset a tonne of their pollution for the tonne of carbon dioxide that's absorbed by that tree. It's called a carbon credit. So when the Australian government says carbon is worth about $23 a tonne, and you start counting the number of trees in this jungle, well, the maths is mind-boggling. David Nilsson has been chasing this carbon fortune for years, from Papua New Guinea to the Philippines. Now, this self-professed carbon cowboy has set up base in Peru's jungle city of Iquitos, a wild west town if ever there was one. He's got a good lawyer, a young Peruvian girlfriend, and boasts about his past as a successful property developer in Australia. Nilsson even boasts that he can divine underground water. But his real gift, it turns out, 
is divining ordinary human weakness. He told me I was going to be a millionaire within a year. <laughs> so what exactly was he after here? The contract would be giving him uh, virtually uh, total control over their natural resources, over their not only their carbon, but their forest and virtually everything. Incredibly, David Nilsson has already convinced some tribes to sign away their rights. And Dan Pantoni is taking me deeper into the Amazon to visit one such community. They're called the Jaguar. They're dirt poor. Many can't read or write. And they've handed Nilsson half of all the carbon that's in their forests. Can you read this for me, please? Hegne Escarta signed the document put in front of him. He's saying he signed it, but he, he can't read. He can't read at all? No, no, no problem. He says he can't read. Mm. Only a handful of Jaguar refused to go along with Nilsson's plan. One of them is a young leader, Angel Yakate. Did you sign that contract? No. No. Why not? Because I knew it was a scam. It is a scam. A monumental double cross and an environmental travesty. We've obtained an executive summary of the agreement and incredibly the main focus is actually logging. As part of the carbon deal, Nilsson's company effectively owns the trees and plans to eventually log them. Even worse, he'll replace them with environmentally disastrous palm oil plantations. Already, the colossal scale of logging by others is shockingly clear. But these are desperately poor people who are easily manipulated, unaware that the supposedly independent lawyer advising them is actually David Nilsson's lawyer. Can he tell me the lawyer's name, please? ¿Cómo se llama el abogado? Walter Cambero. Walter Cambero. Uh -huh. That's David Nilsson's lawyer. David Nilsson is now back in Australia, hunting for investors to pay big money for his slice of the Amazon. So I've mapped all this here, all these villages here. What he doesn't realise at this pitch is that the would-be investor is a 60 Minutes producer, and we're in the room next door. Okay, I've got these three hectares. What? How did you come across? Yeah, sorry, say again. Only three million hectares. Okay. David Nilsson does not have three million hectares of rainforest or anything like it. It's actually the biggest property or carbon project in the world. But that doesn't stop him from promising a fortune for would be investors. It's going to be billions. Big like billions. I just, I, I'm scared to quote it because it's fucking huge, put that way. And David Nilsson all but brags about plans to ultimately cut down the rainforests once the 25-year carbon deal expires. My contracts are 200-year contracts, etched in stone. So when the carbon's gone, people can come through and harvest the rainforest there. Reef, well, we'll, have a, we'll have a forest mention plan that they can reforest, they can plant palm oil. They can cut all the timber, no one can stop them. No one can stop it. But you're going to speak, by, by doing this carbon plan, you're stopping that happening. Yeah, but the carbon plan there goes for 25 years. The, the contracts still run, there's enough timber to supply the world down there. China will love it. Time we decide to have a word with Mr. Nilsson. Yep. David Nilsson. Yep. Liam Bartlett, 60 yep. Minutes. Yeah, mate, how are you doing? It's not your day, is it? No, no, mate, not my day. No. You're telling some more tall stories, trying to get somebody to no, part, no, part no, with their no, money? No, 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 no. It's no scam. It's no scam. No. The person that started the scam, Dr. Pantone, we've taken legal proceedings against him. We know all about Dan and Pantone. Hang on, and he's, he's under house arrest? No, he's not under house arrest. That's a lie. That's your first lie to me. You've told plenty in the last hour, haven't you? Well, this is what I've been doing. Running around telling lies? No. 
interview finished, please turn that camera off. Well, it's not going off because we want some answers about the Amazon tribes that you've been dealing with. I've got nothing more to say. What these Amazon tribes didn't know, couldn't know, was the long trail of people who've trusted David Nilsson and lost money. Just ask the investors who put money into one of his projects here at Clareview in North Queensland in the early 90s. It's a beautiful spot and it seemed a great investment. David Nilsson was selling five acre lots up here on the ridge for $70,000 a piece and there were plenty of takers. But one buyer from Nauru became suspicious when she failed to receive a rates notice from the local council. That's when the penny dropped. As the Queensland Parliament was later told, those lots didn't exist, never had. But Nilsson banked the money anyway, and the investors never saw it again. It's very convincing, very, very convincing. Leo Kiki is a senior barrister from Nauru. He was one of the investors who thought he was buying land at Nilsson's Clareview development. What did you end up with? I end up with nothing. <laughs> A lot of us, all of us, end up with nothing. So, really, it's a conniving scum. David Nilsson has done well for himself and hopes to do very well out of his carbon deals with the Amazon tribes who have trusted in him. At this formal signing ceremony, the audience is told their agreement is supposedly with a company of the United Nations. So you've got to ask, do they really know who or what they're dealing with? Or that David Nilsson actually plans to log their forests? You're tying this forest up for 200 years. 200 years? And you plan to log it? No, I don't. Plant palm oil plantations on no, it? No, I don't. You've just told... You've, sir, your own words. We have you on tape. Well... After 25 years when the carbon's finished, you're going to log the whole lot. I mean, a... have you no shame? Oh, mate. Have you no shame? It's clear many Jaguar now bitterly regret signing this toxic deal, but feel powerless to undo it. They opened up their homes to him. He, he slept in their homes and trusted him. They completely trusted him. And uh, now this hurts them permanently. We're talking about permanent damage here. <laughs> Meanwhile, the other tribe in Nilsson's sites, the Matsis, have held out against his grand plans. They won't sign, at least for now. I'm not ripping him off. But it seems nothing will stop David Nilsson trying to sell his dodgy bundle of signatures to the highest bidder. You were just boasting that you've got control no, no, for 200 no, 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 years. No, 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 no,